today we will see instrumentation of uv visible spectrophotometer in this video i will explain sources of radiation before going in detail let's see how exactly the uv visible spectrophotometer is which are the important parts the first very important part is radiation source radiation source is used to emit the radiations radiations of different wavelength then it comes grating grating is an element of monochromator which separates a polychromatic light into its individual wavelength next is sample cell or sample covet which hold the sample in it finally detector is there and detector detect the transmitted light and it converts transmittance into absorbance that means radiation source grating sample cell and detector these are very important part of a uv visible spectrophotometer but along with these there are number of mirrors number of lenses are there windows and slits are there which are very important in proper working of uv visible spectrophotometer so now let's see how exactly the uv visible spectrophotometer works radiation source emit radiation and these radiations are traveling towards mirror through uh, from this mirror they are transmitted towards the monochromator or grating and here these radiations are separated or sorted into their individual wavelength and then they are transmitted towards the next mirror or lens and from this mirror these individual separated radiations are transmitted towards the sample cell and finally they will reach the detector in the sample cell some radiations are absorbed by the sample and remaining radiations are transmitted towards the detector detector will detect these transmitted radiations and convert the transmittances into absorbance and this is how exactly the uv visible spectrophotometer works now we will see each part in detail the first part is radiation sources that is lamp or bulbs used generally the uv visible spectrophotometer works in the range of 200 to 1100 nanometer and the radiation sources which are used they should provide the radiation of required wavelength range there are many radiation sources available like tungsten lamp deuterium lamp hydrogen discharge lamp or xenon discharge lamp etc one can select any one of these or one can select combination of these lamp there are certain criteria for selection of radiation source and those criteria are first criteria is the radiation source must be stable that means the bulb should not give mechanical failure again and again it must be robust and easy to use second criteria is the radiation source must be of sufficient intensity for detection at the end of optical path now here the radiations have to travel very long distance to reach the detector and for this purpose the radiations should be strong enough or intense enough if the radiations are weak they will end somewhere in the middle and they will not not reach the detector so intensity of radiation is very important here and the third criteria is it must give continuous radiation over entire wavelength region in which it is used now as i said the uv visible spectrophotometer works in the range of 200 to 1100 nanometer the radiation source should give the mag uh, radiations covering the entire range but it is practically not possible to have such radiation source which will cover this entire uv visible region so one can use combination of these radiation sources now now we'll see 
each radiation source in detail. The first radiation source is tungsten lamp. Tungsten lamp is similar to electric light bulb or it is similar to household bulb. Here in this lamp, tungsten filament is heated electrically to white heat. Here in tungsten lamp, the tungsten filament is fixed in an evacuated glass shell and then the glass shell is filled with inert gas. Tungsten filament is heated at high temperature with electric current and after heating, the tungsten filament will start emitting the radiations. This lamp gives radiations uh, in the range of visible and near IR. There are advantages of this lamp. The first advantage is it is stable lamp. It is robust and easy to use. This lamp generally do not give mechanical failure. Second, uh, the disadvantages are the intensity of radiation at short wavelength is very small. That means it gives weak UV radiations but the visible and near IR radiations are strong. The second disadvantage is to maintain constant intensity, the electric current to the lamp must be carefully controlled. That means electric fluctuations should not be there. This is about the tungsten lamp. Second lamp is hydrogen discharge lamp. In this lamp, a pair of electrode is enclosed in a glass shell or quartz shell. If the lamp is used for visible region, glass shell is used and if the lamp is used for UV region, it quartz tube is used. The hydrogen gas is stored under relatively high pressure in this tube. Electric current is passed through the pair of electrodes. Hydrogen molecules are excited electrically and then emit the UV. How this lamp works? When electric current is passing in between the electrodes, electrons are flowing between them and these electrons are bombarding the hydrogen molecules. Now the hydrogen molecules are already under high pressure. They start colliding with each other. Now due to these collisions and bombarding, hydrogen molecules get excited and start emitting the radiations. This lamp is stable, robust and widely used lamp. This lamp emits the radiations near UV region. How this lamp looks like? This is a hydrogen discharge lamp. Now next one is deuterium lamp. The construction and working is almost same as that of hydrogen discharge lamp. Just the difference is that instead of hydrogen gas, deuterium gas is filled under high pressure and deuterium gas will get collided and bombarded by the electrons and it will start emitting the radiations. Advantage it emit the radiations 3 to 5 times more intense than the hydrogen discharge lamp. But the disadvantage is that this lamp is more expensive. Next one is xenon discharge lamp. Xenon gas is stored under high pressure, almost 10 to 30 atmospheric pressure. Xenon discharge lamp has two tungsten electrodes separated by each other separated from each other by 8 mm the voltage difference is maintained in between these two electrodes and when the current pass through them the intense arc is produced in between the electrodes the all discharge lamps like xenon discharge lamp deuterium lamp hydrogen discharge lamp they are almost having same working just the difference is that which gas is filled in, in them. Here in xenon discharge lamp, xenon gas is filled. Due to pressure and electric heating, xenon gas start emitting the radiations. Now this is how xenon discharge lamp 
looks like. It gives intense UV radiations. Now next is mercury arc lamp. Here mercury arc in mercury arc lamp mercury vapors are stored under high pressure. The working of this uh, lamp is same as that of hydrogen discharge lamp. It looks like this one. It do not give continuous spectra. This is the disadvantage of mercury arc lamp. It gives sharp line spectra or band spectra. It is useful for calibration purpose. So these are few lamps which are used in UV visible spectrophotometer. I hope you understood all these things. Thank you for watching my video.